Biofuels have been a hot spot in the world of clean tech technologies over the past decade. But you may not have heard so much about the algae companies that are quickly growing to become the biofuel of choice for many. An Australian company called Algae Tech is producing this new breed of biofuel. And the company's chief executive chairman, Roger Stroud, joins us via our Sydney CBD studio. Roger, thank you for joining us. Now, I must ask you one important question. Is it algae or algae? <laughs> Depends what part of the world you're in, uh, John. Uh, I call it algae, but there are more than enough people who call it algae. We'll go with algae. It was uh, hotly okay. debated around the newsroom. So Tell I'll me... call it Algae Tech Limited then. Great. Tell me a little bit about the company and how it was founded and, and what its intentions are. Well, the company was founded, um, well, on a collaborative basis with a fellow out of the US in Atlanta, Georgia. Earl McConkie and myself about seven years ago in formulation terms and incorporated about two years ago. And we were concerned about uh, having a renewable uh, alternative to uh, food uh, sourced um, biofuels because we didn't feel in the long run it would be sustainable. And so we looked at coming up with a, uh, a high, highly specialised industrial uh, application for growing algae, which has uh, always had the right characteristics uh, for producing various types of fuels. And uh, in putting it all together, Earl and I, uh, let's say, had a, an epiphany or two, and we ended up with uh, what we have today, which we believe is uh, a very uh, unique and uh, clever way of growing algae on a small footprint and uh, at a very high yield. What are the potential uses of an algae fuel? For example, we know the airline industry is spending a lot of money in, in investment trying to find cleaner ways to fuel its planes. Is that the kind of area where you'd be researching? Absolutely right. I mean, in fact, the chemistry is, is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have four uh, revenue streams. Uh, the first one is uh, oily algae, if you like which uh, you'd know in terms of, uh, say, fish oil. The fish eat the oily algae in the ocean and store it. So you use this oil, which is like a canola oil, and turned into biodiesel. You can use the carbohydrates and turn it into ethanol. And you can use the protein and, and use it as stock feed. Or you can use the protein and the carbohydrates, and you can turn it into jet fuel. And uh, the industry, uh, the, the um, airline industry, is calling it green fuel. And in 2012, the Europeans are going to uh, give a, a, a carbon tick to uh, all airlines uh, who uh, use green fuel. And in fact, the Thai government last week announced that they want to become the Thai, uh, the, the Asian hub for green fuel for the aviation industry. Well, Roger, how tried and tested is the technology? Have we actually had a plane use? fuel produced by either algae or another form of biofuels yet? Yes, yes we have and in fact uh, KLM uh, and Air New Zealand have both uh, flown planes with it and in fact they even found that there was uh, a positive outcome in using 50% uh, green fuel uh, and that was conducted with uh, Honeywell, uh, Boeing and uh, Rolls-Royce. Are there fewer emissions? That might seem like a, a silly question but um, I'd be keen to know whether or not it's not just the production on the ground but is also better for the environment? Uh, to the extent it's more efficient, the answer is yes. Tell me, how do you produce an algae fuel? Do you need a lot of space to do that? I mean, I, you, you immediately picture the, a thin layer of, of algae on top of a pond, for example. The pond method does use a lot of space. We are a, a highly industrialised application. So what, what we do is use 40-foot modular photobioreactors. And it's, so it's a standard 40-foot sea container. You put all the gizmos that we've invented inside it, and we can stack them. Uh, we can put them in a very small footprint. And in fact, in comparison to the pond method, um, it's about one thousandth of the area. We do increase it somewhat to about one-tenth because of the solar um, and concentrators we need, but it's on a much, much smaller footprint. You said that 
Part of the development of Algae Tech came because of concerns that other biofuels are also food, foods and in a very hungry developing world that is an issue isn't it? Walk us through why Algae uh, offers a solution to that. Well it offers a solution because the footprint in comparison to the amount of land used uh, to grow foods which converts to biofuel is uh, significantly as far as we're concerned, we're on a very small footprint in comparison. In fact, we even produce protein, which can be used uh, to feed farm animals. Now, we're running short of time, Roger, but you're also launching an IPO. Walk us through that quickly. John, uh, Algae Tech Limited is at the moment in IPO mode. We're looking at raising $7.5 million, and we're looking at putting a, um, um, a demonstration facility on the Manildra site the largest ethanol producer in the country down at Nara, and uh, we're very excited about that and we've just announced a, uh, a, a memorandum of understanding to join with um, a Chinese group to take our technology into China, which we're very excited about because China is showing very, very strong focus on reducing their emission profile. Great. Roger, thanks so much for sharing us uh, that story. We look forward to following it closely. Thanks, John. Thanks Rod for your time. Roger Stroud from Algae Tech. You're watching